Hello friends, welcome. Friends, you might be already aware that Vodafone Ideas follow on public offering is going to open in next couple of days. I think the date is uh, uh, 8, 18th of April. So the fr- so friends, uh, and for that, they have already issued their red herring prospectus. So this you can find here, right? If you go to the webpage, the red herring prospectus details will, will be available to you. So here is the red herring prospectus. So if you go to page number one of red herring prospectus, I'll just show you. This is the red herring prospectus, the page number one. It takes, it'll, it'll take you, yeah, here it is. So you can go and read, it's a very long document, 776 pages document, you know, I don't know how much stamina that anybody can have to read through this red herring prospector. So I will not be focusing on the details of many details in red herring prospectors that has that is the domain of the investors now i will focus only on my expertise what i have expertise in um, in dealing with uh, data on spectrum right now vodafone idea if you see the vodafone idea actually has a huge spectrum debt and the government debt so that debt is emanating out of two different, um, you know, uh, buckets. One is the uh, spectrum auction debt, right, which you will find in page number 227, right, and uh, the AGR judgment debt. Now, what is spectrum auction debt? The spectrum auction debt is that when somebody participates in auction, the government of India gives them an option to pay the spectrum dues on a deferred payment basis, right? So you can pay in yearly installment. So that is the reason why that debt gets accumulated because that debt which is being paid to the government in yearly installment is nothing but the debt that the operator holds uh, in its book as government debt. Similarly, there is one more debt called the de- deferred payment obligation on pursue, on the pursuant of AGR judgment. Now, AGR judgment is a very complex issue. I don't want anybody to get confused with it. Just you, for the sake of understanding, you should know that there is a uh, judgment which Supreme Court delivered which resulted in a in Vodafone idea accumulating debt to the account of around how much uh, 65,000 crores which they are holding on their books right so these debts accumulate you know if you add all the debts you know you'll see that the spectrum debt as well as the AGR debt it kind of translate into 1,95,000 crores which is roughly around 2 lakh crores now friends why this debt is so important the reason this debt is important is because there is going to be an implication on vodafone idea from the point of view of payment which is going to get triggered when this is the date when which the debt is going to get triggered so this is the debt because there was a uh, moratorium which the government of india gave and that moratorium ends on 25th september 2025 now, what was the order which uh, which the government announced to give moratorium? This you can uh, get from my uh, article which I wrote on February 8, 2023. So, I will attach the link to on, in the description so that you can get access to this article. And in this article, you will find a link which um, points to the the government of India's uh, yeah let, let me just give you that give you the link where is the link so many pages I open simultaneously I get my sometimes get confused uh, yeah yeah this is the this is the um, the uh, notification of 13th October 2021 so the advantage of going to my article is that I always attach links to these articles so you can be able to understand and get all these documents you know for your reference okay so this is there in that that article so i will attach the attach a copy of this article in the disc, uh, in my description so you can go through it and you can yourself see how this um, um, this notification is going to impact vodafone ideas from the point of view of his ability to pay this debt okay so uh, what why i am doing this video today is that I would like you to take you through some of the implications that Vodafone Idea will have once this moratorium gets over, which is on date of 25th September 2025. Now, 
how do I calculate the obligation, right? What obligation that Vodafone Idea will have? Now, for that, I have to calculate the outstanding amounts, which is there today, which is part of the um, the red herring prospectus. Now, if you see here, I have been gathering this information about the Vodafone Idea's government debt since 31st March. 2022 because these are available in the annual report so you will find that on 31st march 2022 the government debt of vodafone idea on account of both spectrum payment as well as agr judgment stood at 1,73,000 crores and then on 31st march 2023 the amount stood at 1,87,000 crores and then on 31st march 2023 which is part of the um, uh, the uh, these red herring prospectus i think not i think it is not 31st march it is actually 31st december 2023 i'm sorry because if i if i go through this uh, yeah you see 31st december 2023 so this data is for 31st so it's it's it stands around 195810 crores out of which 66.7% is spectrum debt and agr judgment debt is around 33.3% now friends, uh, so there has been an increase of 7,838 crores since the last data which I had aggregated here, if you see. So here in the yearly installment, installments numbers have been written. So here if you go to the red herring prospectors and I will like you to, I like to encourage you to go go here. Let me go a single page and zoom this uh, data. So you will find that this uh, there are installments numbers de details which are given here so which i have captured in my sheet here so for example the november uh, spectrum date information is uh, going to be paid in six installments starting from december 2025 similarly the february 2024 auction um, outstanding is going to be paid in seven year uh, yearly installments starting from march 26 so all this information is captured in this sheet right you can pause the video and have a look right uh, and the interest rates are also mentioned now friends what i have done is using this data and the yearly installment uh, uh, yeah you know uh, the number of years that for which the installment has to be paid and the interest rates which is given for each and every debt interest rate may not be given in the Vodafone Ideas uh, um, uh, reports, annual reports, including the red herring prospect. It may be given, it may not be given, but these I have taken from the NIA document, notice for invitation of auction, where the interest rates are mentioned there. So you can see this interest rate right, right in that uh, document. Now, using this and using the calculation, uh, using the deferred payment calculation formula, what I have done is I have calculated the yearly installment payments for these uh, these outstanding the debt outstanding. Now you don't have to get confused with this date with this sheet. I would like you to be focused on only one important thing. So I will add these yearly because these yearly installment numbers are captured in this dark. Uh, you know, uh, reddish brown uh, cells, right? So I'll just um, zoom in a little bit further. So now if I add up all this, right? Here I add, here I add, add all these yearly installment numbers, which will get due after the moratorium period ends. It comes out to be roughly around 35,000 crores, right? See, 35,000 crores. So 35,000 crores of, of, uh, of yearly payment for maybe 4-5 years after the moratorium period ends, which is 25th September 2021, is an important number that you should be aware of. Because this is very, very crucial. Why it is crucial? Because whatever may be the revenue Vodafone Idea is making because I think if you look at the Vodafone Idea's annual statement here I have captured the data here and here is the revenue number here which is mentioned here in million rupees million so if you add up, add the last four quarter you will see, see that it comes out to be roughly around 42,000 crores so 43,000 crores of revenue which Vodafone Idea is making right now and after the moratorium period is over they have an yearly outflow of roughly around 35,000 crores, which is calculated here, right? You see here how it is calculated? 
so this uh, it kind of poses a concern that how they are going to deal with this now dealing with this can only happen if a certain portion of the government debt is converted into equity right all of it or a certain portion of it because if the government debts get converted into equity then vodafone idea doesn't have to deal with this outflow of 35000 crores right now this 35000 crores let me break it into two different pieces so that you understand where what is going on so the spectrum part of 35000 crores is how much is around 20 21000 crores and rest is the agr the agr is around 15000 crores now if the spectrum part the go- the government of india converts into equity and then also there will be some complication at what rate what is going to be the sizable equity government of india will hold at the time when and then for every year this amount has to be converted because it, it, there will be a yearly outflow of 20000 crores on spectrum if they convert the whole thing in one go because assume that this outstanding stays constant right because if you look at my sheet you will find that this is only increasing this outstanding is increasing on spectrum payment if i add all this three on spectrum payment the outstanding on spectrum option was how much 122000 crores and now this uh, this was on 31st uh, march 2023 now on 31st december 2023 the outstanding on spectrum option is how much 130000 it's increasing so which basically means that as soon as this whole thing gets due roughly around 135000 crores or 40000 crores of equity conversion has to take place in order to bail vodafone out of the obligation to pay this payments yearly payment of around 20000 crores on account of spectrum payment for around 5 6 years or 7 years depending upon how many years these deferred payment options are due and the second important thing is the agr judgment now the agr judgment uh, uh, deferred payment um, uh, due for the uh, you know for the agr judgment if you go to my sheet which i have used for calculating the deferred payment option uh, sorry here deferred payment calculation so you find the agr judgment is 15000 crore so there is a principle of around 65000 crore on agr which vodafone has has to deal with so they may get get some bail out from the supreme court right which they have file a review petition to deal with this number but there is definitely going to be risk on account of agr judgment as well as on account of the spectrum payment so how the government is going to deal with this two different aspect of debt which is crucial the rest of the debt can be managed very small amount i have seen that these numbers are very very less but these are crucial debts which we the which the which vodafone idea has to manage in spite of the fact their revenue in will increase they are better position compared to other operators from the point of view of their spectrum holding because they have got lot of low frequency band see if you ask me vodafone idea actually is a very healthy company if the spectrum date and agr date has can be taken into account they were they are much better position from the point of view of low frequency spectrum i'll show you some of the data on low frequency spectrum which will be amazed to see let me see if this data can be picked up very quick quickly because i have not prepared this i'm just doing out on a fly i'll just go to my web web page and show you that how good they are on spectrum compared to bharti and uh, reliance jio uh, in some of the circuit especially bharti in mumbai and delhi they are great so if i let me just take this out of the view and then i will show you 900 megahertz band and you will find you will be amazed to see this spectrum holding of vodafone idea in 900 megahertz band they are great they probably have the best spectrum in most important circle so if you see here this is vodafone idea you see so see delhi 10 megahertz gujarat 11 megahertz haryana 12.2 megahertz ap 5 megahertz all this blue you see blue color they are vodafone idea kerala 12.4 megahertz kolkata maharashtra 11 point so if you go to mumbai and if you basic vodafone idea may not have 5g in mumbai but if you go and use any other operators connection in mumbai and you try bharti you will find that vodafone idea has got a better coverage similarly in delhi because why because let's look at mumbai 
Bharti has only 5 megahertz or 900 megahertz spectrum. So they have to deal with both GSM as well as 4G. Maybe they have abundant GSM, I don't know. But they have only 5 megahertz. So they have to basically go to 1800 megahertz band, it's a high frequency band. Vodafone ID and Mumbai has how much? 11 megahertz of spectrum. Can you imagine? On Similarly in Delhi, Vodafone Idea has got 10 megahertz spectrum. How much spectrum Bharti has? 6 megahertz only. Right? So, therefore, you know, Vodafone Idea is not a bad company from a spectrum point of view. But if they are able to deal with this debt, which I mentioned to you, the spectrum debt as well as the AGR debt, somehow, which is going to hit them in next one year time, so they have to deal with that. So that is going to be the key crucial question here, whether the government is going to back them to deal with this debt. If they are going to deal with this debt, then the cost of capital calculation of Vodafone idea, when you do the when you do calculation of uh, of the valuation, you know, I will just show you, I'll give you a peek on the how did I how did I calculate valuation of Vodafone idea. I did some calculation. I don't want to bore you with this Excel sheet. I just want to tell you that how this is calculated. So there is a component of debt. So you have to calculate market value of debt. This is old calculation by the way. I have not plugged in the new numbers yet. But it will be roughly similar. So there will be a market value of debt. And then there will be a market value of equity. Right? So you will see here. And, and there will be a cost of debt. Which is which I am show, showing here as 10.3%. And then there will be a cost of equity. Right? So that cost of equity is, uh, let me just show you. Yeah, cost of equity. Equi sorry, cost of uh, cost of cap, cost of equity and cost of debt. Now, how do you how do you calculate cost of equity? Cost of equity can be calculated by using the using the risk free rate as well as the um, the uh, sorry uh, cost of equity can be calculated by adding the on risk free rate which is 4.51 percent on the old data which I used. Now this number has slightly changed. Plus, plus the uh, the um, the equity risk premium multiply by what? Multiply by this now this value, which is called the uh, levered beta. Now what the levered beta for me comes out to be around 5.62. Why levered beta comes out to be 5.62? Because I actually have to use the debt to equity. Now when I calculate. So if you take the standard beta, so the standard beta may not be very high, like for wireless it is 0.92. But when you calculate the levered beta because of the debt that they carry, the number shoots up because that levered beta includes the um, uh, the uh, the debt to EBITDA number here, right? Which is 7.3 when I did the last calculation. So this number comes out to be around 5.62. So when you, when you use this 5.62, the cost of equity basically shoots up. Right? You can't use the use the uh, this number, uh, the the lower number, which is the uh, the equity risk premium plus the uh, risk free rate. You can't use that. Right? You have to basically include the levered beta because that's the risk that that the company is bearing. Now, if you are going to take a cost of equity of 54.9 percent, which I calculated when I did the last calculation, your DCF calculation is going to go go down significantly because that's a very very high discounting factor. Right? So the risk comes from what? The debt that they carry. If they are able to manage that, this is a fantastic company. Anyway, friends, I thought I'll give you a little bit of a peek as to what the situation is. And I will leave it here and I will uh, just, um, you know, um, you know, stop here. And thank you very much for your time. And I'll come back to you with a new video next time. Thank you very much.